This episode is brought to you by Porkbun, an oddly satisfying domain name registrar whose simple services and affordable products support all levels of entrepreneurship. Hey guys, my name is Christian Taylor. Welcome back to Crayler Main, where I like to talk about all things branding, marketing, and entrepreneurship. I've taken a look at quite a few web hosting solutions on my channel, but many of you have asked about the bigger cloud platforms. When it comes to platforms like Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud Platform, and Microsoft Azure, should you use them for your website? If so, which one is best? Well, before we get into the comparison, let's briefly answer the question of if you should use a cloud platform to host your website. I think in 99% of the cases, the answer is no. If you know you want to use a cloud platform, then you're likely a tech savvy person and you're using it for a specific reason, or just because you enjoy server administration and like having a private server to yourself. Now I wanna be clear here and say that this is not the most technical comparison out there. These cloud platforms are particularly complex and there's a lot of depth to them. If I compared every tiny detail, we would literally be here all day. So I'm just gonna give you my two cents on which ones I tend to prefer and which ones I personally use and why. I consider the companies in this comparison to fall into one of two categories. The first are small independent companies with fewer offerings, but they focus on simplicity and reliability while still giving you this scalable platform. These companies include DigitalOcean, Vulture, and Linode. The second category is what I call the big three, the three companies that dominate the tech space and their platforms are much more complex. These are Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud Platform, and Microsoft Azure. Every single company in this comparison offers rock solid reliability in my testing. I didn't experience any downtime on any of my test instances, and I have the utmost confidence in each of these companies when it comes to the reliability of the hosting itself. In addition, all of these companies offer hourly billing as an option, so there's zero risks or commitment necessary to try it out. Ultimately, you may need or want to tinker around with a few different options before making a final decision. So with that said, let's get right into it with the three independent companies. Kicking things off with DigitalOcean, they're a New York-based company founded in 2011 with VPS services starting at $5 a month. They offer a $100 credit to new customers that you have 60 days to spend, so you can really get a feel for the service with no money involved. DigitalOcean's core products include virtual private servers, Kubernetes, S3 compatible storage buckets, database clusters, and network management including load balancers. The management panel is clean and simple, and it's easy to spin up servers and manage products. They did have the most complex setup for a VPS pre-installed with WordPress, as I had to connect to the server via SSH to finalize the WordPress installation. But as I said, and as I'll keep saying, these platforms are for tech savvy people, people who want it all. You wanna be able to configure all the firewalls, all the things, all the softwares, you want total control. And with total control comes total responsibility. And that is very much a double-edged sword. You can get automated weekly backups for 20% of the cost of the droplet. One thing I wanted to mention is that using a service like Snapshooter, you can set up daily or even hourly backups with DigitalOcean or Linode or other cloud platforms, and they make it pretty easy and intuitive. So don't let it intimidate you that DigitalOcean does not natively offer daily backups, but it's just something I wanted to mention. If you use a third-party service, you'll have to pay for their service plus whatever the storage cost is and configure that all yourself. When it comes to customer support, you'll receive limited free support, enhanced support if you spend more than $500 a month, or live support with 30 minute response time for an additional fee. So who is DigitalOcean for? Well, I'd say DigitalOcean is a good fit for developers who want a flexible and scalable hosting platform that's separated from the big three platforms. DigitalOcean offers cost savings over the big three, and they have the most services out of the independent options. So if your goal is to stay away from AWS or GCP or Azure for whatever reason, I feel like DigitalOcean is gonna be the best option for you. I would not personally recommend DigitalOcean for WordPress websites because of the complex setup process and lack of integrated daily backups, but I do use a DigitalOcean server for most of my WordPress sites through Cloudways, so I can speak of the high reliability and speed of DigitalOcean servers. 
In other words, the hosting itself is very high quality to use as the backbone for your actual hosting. And that's what Cloudways does. They provide a management panel around having your own dedicated server to make things easier. But if you're just looking to get DigitalOcean pure and raw by itself and put a WordPress website on it, Unless you're tech savvy, I think you're just gonna be overwhelmed. Moving on to Vulture, the experience is similar to DigitalOcean. Founded in 2014, Vulture is the newest kid on the block, offering VPS services starting at $2.50 a month. They offer a $100 credit to new customers that you have 30 days to spend, and after that, services are billed hourly. Vulture's core products include virtual private servers, S3 compatible storage buckets, and network management including load balancers. The management panel is a joy to use, but similar to DigitalOcean, I had a complicated experience setting up WordPress on my server. And again, it's because it's for tech savvy people. Vulture offers automatic backups for 20% of the cost of the instance, and they do include daily backups as an option for that cost. They just offer one single level of customer support to my understanding, so I wouldn't choose Vulture if you need urgent, high priority support as an option. I didn't have any reliability issues with Vulture and everything works as expected. When putting it next to DigitalOcean, things feel pretty similar. So which one is right for you? Well, if you don't need a database cluster or the other exclusive services DigitalOcean offers and you're okay with one level of customer support, I lean towards Vulture because of the better value for the included backup solution. It's the same cost as DigitalOcean, but it's daily instead of weekly, and it's hard to argue with that. However, remember that Vulture does not offer high priority support to my knowledge, and their offerings are less extensive. I think Vulture is great for anyone just getting into the server administration world who's looking for a simple, scalable platform to help them get started. On to the final independent platform, let's take a look at Linode. Linode was founded in 2003 and is based in Philadelphia. Hosting services start at $5 a month and you can find, you guessed it, a $100 credit to try it and look around. Linode offers virtual private servers, Kubernetes, S3 compatible storage buckets, and network management including load balancers. The experience at Linode is pretty intuitive. The management panel isn't as sleek as DigitalOcean or Vulture, but it is simple and easy to understand. The WordPress installation script was much easier to use than other platforms, but that's about the only benefit to Linode in my testing. The automatic backups are expensive at 25% of the cost of the instance, and they only keep weekly backups. They do take a daily backup and keep the last day's backup available at all times, but you're just not getting a great value here compared to Vulture. Linode offers one level of standard support to my knowledge, and they were super helpful and responsive to my questions, but politely reminded me that they don't offer extensive technical support, and I should reach out to the forums if I need more help. And I wanted to take a minute to point out that this type of support is standard in the cloud platform industry. None of these six platforms offer tech support for free, and unless there's truly an issue with the server that they are causing and responsible for, you're usually on your own without paying for a premium support plan. If the issue is operator error or a configuration error, and 99% of the time it is, then that is on you and only you to fix unless they offer a higher tier of support that you're paying for. Linode has a long reputation since they're 17 years old, and maybe that's why they seem to charge a bit more for their services. Maybe it's just me, but Linode seems generally boring. I know nothing about Kubernetes and have no experience with it, but unless you're using Linode because of Kubernetes, there's just nothing exciting there for me personally. Linode isn't bad by any means, they offer quality service, and if you want to try them out then you definitely should, but there's no real competitive edge that I can see from my perspective. Regardless of where you decide to host your website or platform, you'll need a domain name. That brings us to today's sponsor, Porkbun. The world of domains can be a bit overwhelming to those of us looking for a painless way to set up our site. Porkbun eliminates the guesswork with affordable domain names and simple hosting solutions fit for every user. Stand out from the .com crowd with a domain name that proudly reflects who you are and what you do. From .design to .delivery, .club to .co, Porkbun's domains give you full creative expression backed by the security you'd expect. With a treasure trove of first-year sales and some of the lowest renewal rates on the market, Porkbun is your guide to domain name glory. 
Once you're set on your extension, make sure your hosting environment meets your needs. If you're one of the many still confused by WordPress hosting, try Porkbun's Easy WordPress. It's in the name. Simple, speedy, performance-driven hosting for whatever you care to share. Whether you custom coded your site or need to build from the ground up, Porkbun has comprehensive hosting and site building plans that let you jump in and get straight to work. Whichever plan you choose, try it free and join the throngs of happy customers who call Porkbun home. Huge thanks to Porkbun for supporting the channel. And now let's take a look at the big three cloud platforms. Jumping back into the video, it's time to take a look at the giant in this space, Amazon Web Services. AWS is its own tier of cloud platform. They offer literally all the things, like seriously, from machine learning to video encoding to a content delivery network, Amazon does it all. Amazon Web Services offers a free tier where you can get a very basic starter server free for 12 months. There's no catches either. As long as you're a new customer, you can sign up and take advantage of the free services. AWS is definitely a powerful, reliable, quality cloud platform with a phenomenal reputation. That's the single reason why it gets so much praise. The extensive and robust offerings and full scalability are attractive to anyone, especially after they see Amazon's name attached to it. Amazon is a tech giant, so who wouldn't want their website hosted by Amazon? Well, hosting your website through Amazon seems like a great idea on paper, but when you see the complexity of the management panel, you might think twice. I personally used Amazon Web Services for a little under two years to host all of my websites. I maintained my own virtual private server that ran cPanel, and let me tell you, it was a piece of work. Don't get me wrong, AWS is amazing. The pricing is a bit expensive, but Amazon has every right to demand the pricing for its name and reputation. The reliability was great, but the management panel caused me a lot of headaches. It's not easy to understand at all, and there are entire companies dedicated to AWS management. That's right, you can hire out a third-party company to manage your AWS services for you because it's that complex. I feel like AWS management needs to become a college degree or something. But I'm not telling you to avoid AWS. I used it for quite a while and liked it. Just realize what you're getting into. I know some of you are probably gonna ask about Amazon Light Sale. This is Amazon's answer to simpler services like DigitalOcean and Vulture. Light Sale is great for deploying servers, but honestly, when it comes down to actually deploying a server with WordPress pre-installed, I find that it's an identical, confusing experience that's the same as AWS EC2 instances. And that's because Light Sale is literally just a modern panel that uses the AWS API. And it also has a simpler and easier to understand pricing structure. Amazon offers something for everyone with many levels of support at different price points, and you have all the tools you need to build your platform. AWS is best for those who want the wide variety of services Amazon offers, with Amazon's name to back it up, and you don't mind paying up. If you're okay with these factors, I can't argue with AWS. It truly was a pleasure to use, and I so much respect the infrastructure that Amazon has spent years building out, and if you want that behind your software project, AWS is great. There's a new kid on the block though, and that's Microsoft Azure. Actually, Azure is only two years newer than Amazon Web Services, but dang, the experience is wildly different. Azure is a rising star. They offer a lot of services, including the exotic ones like machine learning, but the difference is that you don't need a college degree to understand how the panel works. You can get started right away with a $200 credit valid for 30 days, and there's also a free tier giving you access to some services free for 12 months. The Microsoft Azure panel is truly something special. It's laid out in a way that's not overwhelming and easy to learn. I'm not gonna say it's super easy to use, but Microsoft has done a killer job simplifying a complex cloud platform into an intuitive panel. Azure is what my software as a service company uses for our platform, and I've had a relatively easy time learning how different features work and configuring things to our needs. Where Azure really shines, in my opinion, is with their app service. Azure App Service is a fully managed platform for building, deploying, and scaling web apps, and it's the core hosting solution for our company. App Service takes away the stress of managing a VPS and dealing with network configuration, security, backups, and more. 
It's allowed us to put more time into the development of our platform and less time into the nitty gritty server administration. Now, App Service isn't an exclusive concept to Azure. You'll find alternatives like Elastic Beanstalk at AWS and App Engine at Google Cloud Platform, but App Service, when combined with the simplicity of the Azure panel, is truly something special. If for whatever reason you're set on hosting a WordPress website on a cloud platform, I would pick Azure and use an app service. Setting up backups at Azure is easy and simple for most any service, and they offer three tiers of customer support. I love that they only have one price and one price only for their support tiers. There's no mysterious, hard to understand variable pricing like AWS and the other platforms. So props to Microsoft for having transparency on the pricing. Azure isn't all unicorns and rainbows though. I often find myself annoyed that task execution works on island time. Seriously, anything from spinning up a server to deleting a storage bucket takes forever. It's not really a huge deal, but it's something I wanted to mention. Overall though, I never expected to be saying this, but Microsoft Azure is my favorite platform of the big three, and I personally prefer it over AWS for its intuitive panel and innovative app service platform. I seriously don't like Microsoft. I've never really liked their services, but man, Azure is truly something innovative and special. All right, we're gonna close things out with Google Cloud Platform. GCP reminds me a lot of Amazon Web Services, but with the Google name stamped on it. You'll enjoy a $300 credit to try out the platform, and just like other top platforms, Google Cloud Platform can do all the things. The management panel is as cluttered, if not worse, than Amazon Web Services, and it feels like a typical cluttered Google UI to me. To me personally, the appeal to Google Cloud Platform is that, well, it's Google. Who doesn't want to host their stuff with Google? The biggest search engine in the world and the owner of YouTube hosting your website? That's pretty cool. I know it seems like Amazon is the biggest platform as far as name and reputation here, but I feel like if we're going for the cool factor, Google beats it. Now look, Google Cloud Platform is just plain boring to me. There's no other way to spin it. It's rock solid, reliable hosting that will work great for you. And if you like it, you like it. It reminds me exactly of the experience at Google Domains. It's vanilla, but it's fairly reasonable and high quality. My main beef with Google Cloud Platform is the insanely complicated process you have to go through to create automated backups. It can be done, but it's a drawn out process unlike AWS and Azure. Other than that though, it feels very similar to Amazon Web Services. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this is not the most technical or detailed comparison, but rather a brief overview of which platform you may want to use. The great thing is, every platform here offers a credit for new users, and since everything is billed per hour, you can try out each platform for yourself to help you make a decision on what's best for you. As for me, I use managed hosting solutions for my WordPress websites, but I love using Azure for my software as a service company. It works well for us, and the unique app service feature combined with an easy to use panel makes it stand out from the rest. So which cloud platform are you gonna use? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you like this video, do be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss when I release new videos. With that said, I will catch you guys next time.